as it, as it, as it, as it uh, goes proverbially, our next speaker needs no introduction. <laughs> this is correct. <laughs> uh, Professor Justine Vujic has been on the faculty here for about 20 years now. University. More than that. More than that. <laughs> <laughs> I came in 92. Okay. She's, not old. Um, she's a University of Michigan uh, PhD and is on the advisory of the University of Michigan. Uh, she's an expert in uh, many fields, some fields of nuclear engineering, reactor physics, neutronics, and more recently in her career, uh, nuclear nonproliferation. Uh, we thought we would take the opportunity to have Professor Fuya to give the colloquium. Uh, because it was just a week ago we received uh, the good news a little bit by surprise. I was expecting we'd have to wait another month or so um, that the DOE, uh, after receiving 11 proposals, um, uh, very large proposals around the country, um, has uh, awarded um, Berkeley again, uh, which won the NNSC competition. You are stealing my talk. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to completely surprise us when she's going to talk to us. <laughs> anyway, uh, there are some new aspects to the NNSC. It was a great week. Um, you're going to see more and more uh, publicity roll out of it. It's a very big deal, and I'm going to turn it over to Jasmine. So I apologize. <laughs> Actually, uh, official uh, press release from UC Berkeley is coming up. Um, they're a bit too late because uh, Sarah Young, who interviewed uh, me last week, uh, is pretty busy with many things. But uh, our students were uh, quicker, so Daily Cow already published it over the weekend. So we have uh, already some announcement. OK, so first I will. Um, introduce the current um, project that we have with NSSC, then uh, go over what we did differently to win again in another five years, and then we'll go back to summary of the, what we have accomplished over the last four and a half years. So this is uh, um, our current uh, Nuclear Science and Security Consortium. It was awarded in 2011. At that time, there were a total of 10 competing um, large consortium proposals. Uh, we won by flying colors and all of that. We got very good reviews. Um, and uh, in this current uh, uh, grant, we have seven university teams that we work together, four national laboratories that are listed. I'm PI and the director of the program. Carl is uh, executive director. Uh, it is 25 million for five years. So we are trying to burn it uh, now a bit faster because uh, this, uh, we were saving some funding um, because we still have students that will not complete their degrees by the end of uh, our grant, which is uh, the end of June. So we were expecting to have an, another year of no cost extension, so we were just saving some money. But now uh, we got another grant, so we, we will be rethinking it. Uh, we also got a million and a half for minority serving institution support, and I will um, just uh, talk a little bit about it. And for mentorship, each lab got per year 125K, which is just you know a little bit uh, um, for the men mentorship uh, um, duties. Uh, so what we have here, we focused on science, technology, and policy, which is related to nuclear security. Uh, in the original proposal, we envisioned five research areas, nuclear and particle physics, nuclear chemistry and radiochemistry, nuclear engineering, radiation detection and instrumentation, and nuclear security policy. And we also envisioned this pipeline, uh, which was kind of in uh, acronym uh, for our, uh, I don't have it here, but it's success pipeline, so this is very uh, long acronym. Uh, in which we envision that we will be um, educating and training the next generation of researchers and scientists that will eventually go to national laboratories. And I will show you the numbers, what we have after four years. 
And then also uh, that we will have a, a, a excellent collaboration with national laboratories so that we get feedback from them uh, in uh, uh, basically uh, what is that they need, what is uh, uh, the research uh, that is now uh, at the very end uh, of high tech that they would need our students to get engaged in. Um, and this is overall uh, uh, a list of, uh, of collaborating institutions. So we have seven university teams. We have uh, four national laboratories. And you see the team leader for each of these teams, as well as point of contacts for um, national laboratories that uh, were actually helping our students to uh, go to the labs to find mentors and to do their master and PhD thesis. And um, as we mentioned a few times, uh, we must be doing something right. Because uh, um, uh, only about two years ago, uh, NNSA decided to issue um, two additional call for proposals for consortia. So they switched entirely from previous model which was to fund individual uh, PIs uh, to this model of uh, consortia in which you had uh, five, six, or even more universities to work. Um, and it seems to be excellent model uh, that we showed the path for the others, uh, particularly uh, Michigan. Uh, I had uh, many, many discussions with Sarah Pozzi, uh, who is the uh, PI for Michigan led consortium regarding what we did, how we did it. So uh, they actually uh, wrote their proposal based on our experiences. So these two also got 25 million for five years. Uh, the Michigan led consortium um, is doing research and development in nuclear arms control verification <coughs> technology, including nuclear safeguard effectiveness. They have 13 universities and seven national laboratories very large consortium. And uh, this third one is North Carolina State Lab Consortium. Uh, they're doing research and development in enabling capabilities for non-proliferation. They have six universities and several labs. Uh, NNSA is actually encouraging us, the consortia, to work together, not to compete against each other, but actually to share our experiences, students, and particularly with the uh, uh, University of Michigan-led consortium, uh, we have uh, uh, we share um, uh, seminars, uh, we share uh, different panels, and so on. So Sarah Pozzi will be coming in a week or so um, uh, to our department. So we will continue discussing about it. And again, this is my announcement. We won. <laughs> so it was just uh, one week ago uh, that early morning, because there are three hours ahead of us, I woke up, I got my coffee going, and I said to read my email. And the first message was from uh, uh, NSA um, sending us uh, good news for Monday morning. Uh, so basically, uh, as Carl mentioned, all the official you don't know, but it seems that there were 11 uh, proposals. Michigan uh, and North Carolina State could not compete but uh, uh, as the lead institutions. And we could not uh, uh, compete when they were uh, preparing their proposals. But everybody else, even those that are already uh, participating in this consortia, could compete. So this was really, really um, difficult uh, uh, competition again. Uh, we were asked to write entirely new proposals. So this was not uh, just uh, you know, reporting and then uh, uh, expand, getting extension for the other five years. Uh, we wrote during summer. Um, the deadline was the end of August. Another proposal that in total had 500 pages with all the attachments, uh, uh, CVs, and so on and so on. And what we got in an email from uh, Eva Graf, uh, when we won, he was congratulating us and saying, uh, you outdid yourself. You, you prepared another fantastic uh, uh, proposal. So I would like to thank everybody that participated uh, in this proposal. Uh, so now we have um, eight 
university teams and five national laboratories. So we slightly modified and changed our list of uh, universities. As you can see, we still have uh, Michigan State University, University of California, Davis, Irvine. Now we added George Washington University to strengthen our policy. Texas A&M as well. Uh, it is an interesting story. Uh, we, they uh, competed against us uh, uh, in the original competition. So this time around, we politely invited them to join us in our efforts. They refused. However, uh, so they again competed against us, but we got one faculty from Texas A&M, an excellent faculty who is in our team. So anyway, um, University of Tennessee, Knoxville, also diplomatically, because they also competed against us during the first round of competition in 2011, they're very good. And we also wanted uh, um, uh, their team to join ours, and they decided to do it this time around. So, uh, it's good because they, uh, I think they competed against Michigan last time and didn't get again. So this was the winning strategy. Uh, and, and then we have um, uh, five labs because with the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, Oak Ridge Laboratory is a reasonable addition. So we added Oak Ridge as well. So this is now how it looks like. So it is really nicely distributed uh, over um, uh, different parts of the map. And um, this was from announcement. So this, this is the link, so you can uh, read from the link. But this is Anne Harrington um, uh, talking about the mission and uh, uh, specifying that uh, uh, while the other two consortia have a specific topics, as I mentioned, uh, in our case, we again focused on basic sciences as well as application because we believe that this is the way to go. Uh, we were thinking uh, uh, during our preparation uh, should we go a little bit more to uh, the, the applied sciences or keep basic sciences uh, uh, as uh, uh, our focus and uh, it seems to resonate uh, with uh, NMSA as well. Uh, so. What are um, our primary objectives? The title is slightly different, let's see. So now it's Nuclear Science and Engineering Non-Proliferation Research Council. So these titles are specified <laughs> in the announcement so we have no choice. So this is how uh, it is to be named. So these are, um, three primary objectives uh, supporting an NSA mission to provide an effective conduit for integration of basic academic and applied national laboratory research, to provide basic research in concepts, technology, and paradigms that is complementary to lab research, and required for meeting the non-proliferation mission, <coughs> and then prepare non-proliferation experts um, to go into DOE laboratories and related federal service. So this is what we did differently this time around. As I mentioned, uh, we had five research areas last time. Now we have four um, basic research areas, and then we have additional four cross-cutting areas. So we have nuclear and particle physics, which is uh, same uh, as the last time. We have different uh, focus group lead. It's Barbara Jacek from uh, um, physics as well as from uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Radiochemistry and forensics. Forensics has been added to this part. Ken Chervinsky is the lead. Nuclear engineering, uh, Max Bertoni is the lead now. Nuclear instrumentation uh, is Kai. And then we have these four areas that are basically very important for each of these four research areas, nuclear data. And it turns out that um, uh, in uh, uh, the review comments that we received um, after uh, we were awarded this grant, they emphasize that nuclear data is actually something that is very, very important. So Lee Bernstein will be leading this cross-cutting area. Then um, uh, the next is data modeling and simulation. Again, for each of these areas, uh, uh, high performance simulation modeling is extremely important. So Rachel Slabo will lead that. 
Then we have nuclear security policy, uh, which touches every single of these four areas. Michael Nacht from our uh, uh, Goldman School of Public Policy will continue to lead that. And then we have education and training that uh, Bethany uh, will lead. And this is our overall organizational uh, chart. I will not go into details. I already mentioned uh, uh, who are the leads for these research areas. And then we have our POC Council. So this is, uh, uh, it consists of the leads from each of the university teams and POCs from five uh, laboratories right now. We have our advisory board as well. And we have our core um, executive team uh, and the staff members. Now I will switch gears and go quickly over uh, NSSC, Nuclear Science and Security Consortium, the current consortium highlights what uh, we have done and accomplished over the last uh, uh, several years. So these are um, our five focus areas that we have right now. We did have some changes Unfortunately, our own Heiner Nietzsche uh, passed away in 2014, and uh, Stan Cruz, and I will mention it, passed away uh, last summer. Um, so we uh, envisioned this uh, coupling between science, technology, and policy, uh, and it's why we added uh, uh, nuclear security policy, and we have a course that will say a few more words down the line, which is taught right now, for the fifth time uh, by Michael uh, Prusen and before this year by Stan Prusen. And in that course, we have students from uh, sciences and nuclear engineering, plus students from public policy, humanities, and they um, discuss and uh, in a way uh, uh, help each other to understand these uh, difficult areas. The goal is, as I mentioned, many times uh, uh, the policy that we integrated uh, into our uh, consortium is that we have now people that know both nuclear science and nuclear technology as well as policy and some of them might go to Washington and might go to Congress and actually uh, we will have finally some people that know something about the, uh, our field that will be deciding on the budget as well as on long-term policy. This is the summary of uh, different research um, areas or sub-areas. Uh, we have over 50 uh, different research projects. Each team has uh, several research projects. So we did nuclear physics. We work from nuclear reactions, structure physics, neutron physics, low background measurements, to nuclear data research. Nuclear chemistry and radiochemistry from isotope ratio measurements, actinides in soil, separations, fallout samples, to molecular nuclear forensics methods. In nuclear engineering, um, we are kind of all over the area from uh, uh, safe and se secure reactor designs to modeling and sim simulation, detector material characterization, and so on radiation detection and measurements, gamma ray imaging systems, position se sensitive high performance germanium detectors, image reconstruction from 2D, now we are going to 3D reconstruction, and background radiation characterization, and in nuclear security policy from uh, cross domain deterrence, international cooperation on nuclear security, uh, complexity science from nuclear security, and we have our own nuclear policy working group that uh, uh, Bethany Goldman is leading, that has been now um, spread from uh, UC Berkeley to several other collaborating universities. So let me just go over um, uh, certain highlights in each of these areas. So nuclear physics focus area, Eric Norman is the lead for this area. And as I mentioned, um, these are some of the topics uh, uh, that uh, is being discussed, such as Watchmen, uh, Mona, and Gretina. And I will just extract some of the good work of the students that are funded 
in uh, um, this particular research group. So this is uh, Christopher Grant, uh, postdoc research associate at UC Davis. And now I think uh, 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 we should have it, but I don't see it. Uh, oh, I see it. He's now uh, at Los Alamos uh, uh, National Laboratory. So his research program uh, is being cryogenic apparatus for precision test of argon interaction with neutrons called captain. Oops, go back. And then we have our own um, <coughs> star, yes. Um, so he was one of the first postdocs that we um, funded uh, in NSSC. So he spent two years with us and then moved on to staff position at uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. So his work is nuclear plasma interactions with compound nuclear states. A UCP advisor was uh, uh, Carl Van Bieber and uh, mentors at Livermore, Lee uh, Bernstein, and our own student, or my own student, also doc uh, doctoral student there in Apollo. A uh, nuclear engineering focus area that currently Rachel um, is heading uh, works on modeling and simulation, high performance computing, detector materials characterization, beta delayed gamma ray analysis, novel synthesis. Here you have a work um, by uh, Ryan Bergman uh, that was funded from NSSC and uh, left. He is now a postdoc at Share Institute. So he did uh, uh, <coughs> Monte Carlo development from scratch for neutron transport on uh, uh, high performance computing and new platforms such as GPUs. And Kelly uh, Rowan, who is working with uh, Rachel, is continuing uh, this work. Uh, as a highlight, we have um, uh, another doctoral student of ours, which is uh, Josh Brown. Uh, uh, supervised by Bethany Goldblum, uh, as well as uh, David Reina from uh, Sandia. So he works both at, up at LBL and Sandia National Laboratories on this scintillator characterization to support detection of special nuclear materials uh, using Sandia neutron scatter camera. So these are some of the great results, uh, the pre preliminary results that he obtained. So on the uh, left-hand side is 2D histogram <coughs> obtained um, of the pulse height measurements in target cell as a function of time of light of neutrons, um, scattered neutrons. And then the other one here is using the relativistic energy time uh, relation. The data are converted to pulse height as a function of proton energy deposition. And he compares so this is, again, preliminary data with uh, these four published <coughs> results. So his experimental measurements are the black uh, dots. And we see that uh, there is great um, agreement with Takeda's work. Uh, these are some of the works of our competing groups, such as Sarah Potsi's group. And we see that there is a little bit of bias in their case. So uh, when Sarah comes, we will be discussing to see why uh, we see these differences. And this is beautiful agreement uh, of Josh work with Takeda's measurements. Uh, radiochemistry focus area, Kancherinsky, UNLV. So they're, uh, again, um, doing fan fantastic work in isotope ratio measurements. Actinides, measurements of actinides <coughs> in uh, soil samples, radiochemical separation, all out sample characterization, um, heavy and super heavy element studies, and molecular nuclear forensics. So we see some of nuclear fallout forms on the left hand side, and this is radiochemical separation. And I would like just to mention that uh, uh, we are very, very sad that we lost our own uh, Hainonichi, who was uh, the uh, focus group lead for three years. And he had a fantastic group uh, up at LBL. So this is just the highlight of one of the students, Kerry um, Campbell. And we also had uh, Sherry Faye, 
um, that graduated from this group uh, and came to Berkeley as a postdoc. And she got hired uh, as a postdoc at the uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. So again, um, this is synthesis characterization in laser ablation mass spectroscopy um, analysis of samples that contain uranium, neptunium, and plutonium oxides. Uh, this is a particular uh, techniques which is explained here. And I will just highlight that <coughs> this uh, technique uh, minimizes the handling of these samples, has high throughput, and no any type of waste generated. These are the samples, um, very small samples. So this is actinide oxide samples. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the loops which uh, um, in introduce this ablation steam to decrease uh, uh, fractionation. And these are the data. So this is quantitative analysis of solid oxide samples that contain plutonium-239 and uh, neptunium-37. Uh, um, so this is a, a very effective determination of plutonium concentrations. Our own Kaiveta as well. Uh, is focus group lead for radiation detection and instrumentation focus area. He has a large group of undergrads, graduate students, and postdocs that mostly sit up at LBL. And most of them, or a large percentage of them, uh, are funded by NSSC. So gamma ray imaging system, position sensitive high, high performance germanium detectors, and I already mentioned 3D uh, data fusion, uh, coherent elastic neutrino nuclear scattering with germanium, and background characterization within RadWatch and RadMap. So again, we have mostly undergrads working uh, uh, for this project RadWatch, and uh, we are funding probably 10 of them over the years, maybe more. Uh, that continue measuring samples and posting up continuously data on the website, so it's redwatch.berkeley.edu, that are related to Fukushima fallout. So they're measuring um, air samples, uh, uh, water, uh, rain, uh, tap water, milk, uh, and recently uh, as related to the possible contaminated water, ocean water coming, uh, they're measuring fish. So every um, week a student goes to the market to buy fresh fish uh, and uh, um, do the measurements. So again, it has been posted uh, uh, continuously on our website. The highlight in this area is uh, Ross Bernowski. I think he's graduating in May. Um, there are several of them who uh, will be graduating. So Kai Vetter uh, is uh, his mentor, uh, and uh, Lucian Michalescu uh, from LBML. So he is doing this fantastic work on 3D volumetric and real-time gamma ray imaging uh, with CCI2 and HEMI detectors. Um, so what they're doing, uh, if they're trying to localize different type of gamma sources in 3D spatial dimensions. So um, because it's very fast, it enables real-time estimation of detector location. And also, because here you don't uh, see very much where it is, so what they are doing, they are incorporating it, uh, into uh, the visual data and doing scene reconstruction to incorporate this 3D modeling. And this is some of the instrumentation um, that they're developing and using. Another great student of ours that work in this area is uh, uh, Patricia Schuster. And she is also very active not only in the detection and measurement, but also in policy uh, as well. Um, and uh, um, Kai Wetter, Stan Trusen was also her advisor, and these are her mentors at uh, Sandia National Laboratory. Nuclear security and policy focus area. Um, Michael Nacht is uh, the focus group lead 
in this area, uh, and um, he is uh, doing both research as well as teaching the course that uh, uh, became uh, uh, of great interest not only for uh, UC Berkeley students, uh, but also uh, many people from the labs would like um, to sit in and uh, um, uh, listen to this course. Uh, so he's working in this international cooperation on nuclear security as well as network science for non-proliferation, and I will show some slides in that. Um, uh, framework for neutron detection in international safeguards. Um, he and uh, Stenkelsen uh, were working on the textbook for this course, which is uh, uh, called Nuclear Security Policy and Technology. Um, I hope uh, um, Mike will continue working on, on this textbook. And again, part of uh, this nuclear security policy focus area is nuclear policy working group that started here in Berkeley, um, mostly with undergrads. So this was one way to uh, get undergrads interested in nuclear um, security policy uh, and security area. Those were very uh, lively discussions. Uh, there are uh, speakers from different areas. And this model became so popular that several other collaborating universities started their own nuclear policy working group. So you see here uh, a group of students that are member of this one. And sure enough, I uh, have to mention um, our own Stan Trusten, who was instrumental both in working on the preparation of this proposal, uh, as well as in working in what uh, uh, nuclear policy work, as well as nuclear forensics work. Um, and I will not uh, um, mention uh, more about it because we know him. Um, and uh, uh, he was co-teaching um, this course uh, uh, for four years, I believe, from the very beginning uh, with uh, uh, Michael Nacht. Uh, this is just one example. Um, we had a postdoc um, in this area, David Sweeney, um, who uh, got a uh, full-time position and left last year. But he was working on developing uh, uh, this um, uh, so-called network science for non-proliferation using historical and publicly available data to try to come up with uh, uh, this network and connections uh, related to um, these different uh, uh, areas, such as threat and conflicts, alliances, trade, nuclear cooperation agreements between different countries, in order to predict um, what is the risk of a particular country um, getting into um, uh, illegal use of uh, nuclear materials or nuclear technologies or actually trying to develop nuclear weapons. Now I will be quickly going over um, highlights of NSSC demographics. So over the last four and a half years, um, we uh, funded fully or partially a large number of students. So more than 350 people were fully or partially funded. Um, and we have another group of probably 100 or more so-called affiliates that uh, were uh, uh, working in the same research groups and partially funded, maybe we funded uh, travel expenses or instrumentation or something like that. In average, every year we funded about nine postdoctoral post fellows, 50 graduate students, uh, and about 30 undergrads. Uh, Sorry. All of them were required to spend some time in one of four national laboratories uh, and to have mentors. So most of them uh, did have mentors in four national laboratories. And we have uh, about 60 mentors that work with our students, uh, and close to 40 uh, of NSSC fellows and affiliates <coughs> were hired by uh, national laboratories. So I will show the list. So we are expecting this year to have few more that will graduate and uh, got hired. Um, this is the quality. So um, more than. Um, 
80 awards, I think uh, we upgraded this one, um, uh, earned by faculty and fellows, more than 170 collaborative publications and conference procedures, and over 600 oral and poster uh, presentation uh, in the research areas. So this is um, a statement from Los Alamos um, National Laboratory Researchers. After the first summer school uh, in 2014, we had at Los Alamos, he said, we just wrapped up an SST summer school, and I was really impressed by the caliber of students you have in the program. So we really have excellent, excellent students. In terms of minority serving institutions, uh, we got a million and a half, so we have to issue our own call for proposals. Um, and we had about uh, 29 um, uh, applications from 29 uh, university team at minority service institutions. We awarded five, 250K per, uh, total. Um, we also mentored them and helped them out to start with their research. And we also funded uh, uh, 15 um, fellowships and internships for students from minority serving institutions to come to national laboratories to, or to one of our collaborating uh, universities. So this is a bit of statistics, 377 oral presentations, 200 posters, 145 awards, um, 125 peer-reviewed publications, 63 non-peer-reviewed, and 47 uh, conference proceedings. And again, uh, this needs to be updated for year number five. Degrees, so we, uh, so far, again, we need to update it for year number five, 20, 25, 35 bachelor's degrees, master's 23, and PhD's 24 awarded. And these are affiliates that were partially funded uh, by us and other 14 PhDs, five masters, and five bachelor degrees. Uh, these are some of the awards that our students received. Uh, so these are just DOE and lab fellowships and awards. So you see Lawrence uh, Livermore Awards, uh, uh, National Science Foundation Awards, and the UP fellowships, <coughs> and so on. This is the number of those 35 at this moment um, that were uh, hired um, by national laboratories, either as full-time positions or postdoc positions. So from uh, UC Berkeley, total of 21 fellows were hired by national laboratories, UC Davis two, um, UNLV six, MSU six, and total of 35. <coughs> we are very happy about that. This is, um, yeah, I will not go over the names, but these are some of the names uh, as of um, uh, last May that got postdoc or full-time positions in the labs, and I will show the pictures so you can recognize uh, 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 our students. Uh, so these are fellows, NSSC fellows, that went and got staff positions at national laboratories. More of them. These are uh, those that obtained postdoc positions in one of the labs. These are NSSC fellows uh, that got staff and postdoc positions in uh, uh, other laboratories, which are not the four laboratories that we collaborate with. And we have a list of those that went to academia as well. So these are uh, our students that got teaching positions and uh, that work uh, in uh, different uh, institutes and um, institutions. Okay, a few more. So what is our educational program that is so successful? So this is what we have. Uh, we developed specific programs and uh, uh, curricula for our students. Uh, we also have a list of workshops and summer schools, uh, very broad outreach, and we are currently actually going to the list of students that apply 
to decide um, now we have funding uh, and uh, what is the total number that we could admit in the engineering department? 27 this year. 27 this year, which is a really large number. As you know, we every year we obtain uh, a quota from uh, uh, the UC Berkeley administration on what is the total number that we can admit. Uh, we also work to get uh, adjunct positions in our department for our colleagues from national laboratories and then um, eventually they will go um, into the careers uh, in uh, uh, national laboratories. So we are very proud that we have uh, um, Lee Bernstein uh, who is a uh, um, staff scientist in Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory that uh, uh, became uh, adjunct faculty in our department in spring uh, 2015. Uh, Lee is just uh, fantastic in terms of mentoring our students in uh, having all kinds of fantastic ideas for uh, research uh, and for projects. So uh, this is just a win-win situation. Um, in terms of uh, course <coughs> development, as I mentioned, uh, we have this nuclear security, the nexus between policy and technology, developed by Professor Michael Nacht and our own Sven Trussen. And uh, I hope that um, uh, Michael will continue uh, with the textbook. Uh, then we have several other courses that I list here um, at UC Irvine and UC Davis that were developed specifically for um, NSSC-related uh, 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 group of students. Um, these are um, uh, chemistry course that was developed by Heino Nietzsche, and now Luciano Moretto is teaching that course, so we made sure that uh, our chemistry department uh, uh, continues offering this course because we invested um, both into the laboratories as well as into the development of the course. Uh, then uh, any one of four, uh, any two of four is also developed specifically for NSSC nuclear analytical technologies. Uh, and um, this is uh, uh, a little bit about this course. So as you can see, uh, we have a combination of technical and non-technical uh, students that attend uh, this course. This is the statistic over the last uh, uh, four years. And let's see, uh, Sasha, how many students are uh, in the class right now? Just about 20. 20. Do you know uh, how many are technical and non-technical? I think it's about 15 technical and five policy. Yes. Um, okay. And then um, what is interesting, every year they have an um, interesting project that students work on. Uh, if I remember, I don't know if it was, was last year or the year before, the uh, topic was somebody dropped a dirty bomb from Moscow. Okay. So um, the students were subdivided into teams. So you have one team playing the role of state department. Then the other team was playing the role of uh, international inspectors. The third team was playing the role, I don't know, negotiators and so on. So they were um, to come up with ideas how to go on site and do the measurements and how to decide you know, what happened. Then who did it? Uh, what are the type of signatures to uh, help out to decide who did it? And the State Department group was uh, to figure out how to convince Russians that U.S. didn't do it, <laughs> and so on. So these were some of the policy type of uh, games. Uh, this is radiochemistry course. As I mentioned, we invest invested uh, almost, I think, 400,000 into our instrumentation um, for this particular teaching laboratory. Um, and hopefully it will be uh, continue to be offered. And this is our own uh, 204 uh, nuclear engineering course, uh, uh, graduate level or uh, undergraduate laboratory course, uh, any one of four, uh, that will go over um, these uh, uh, topics uh, at much higher level. Um, what we did over many years um, is to have a large number of workshops, different type of panels, events, summer schools, and so on, and I will quickly go <coughs> over it. So we had uh, more than 18, I think we haven't count uh, um, 
last summer uh, schools. Uh, over 385 students went through these summer schools um, and uh, um, more than 125 uh, scientists from national laboratories were involved in summer schools as uh, teachers, presenters, uh, <coughs> and so on. Um, and uh, um, uh, Los Alamos and Sandia developed specifically for our group of students um, uh, summer lab with hands-on um, work with uh, plutonium and uranium, which is a unique capability that could be presented uh, um, uh, on their sites. So this is a uh, um, number of summer schools that we supported over the last four years. And uh, this is the list, I will not go into details, but this is uh, a list of uh, summer schools in 2011 from radiochemistry fuel cycle summer school that Ken Chervinsky um, has every summer. It's four uh, week type of work to a policy boot camp that we also offered in collaboration with IGCC at uh, UC San Diego every summer. So um, some of these schools are required for all of our students, some are optional, so they can go. So this is 2013, again, radiochemistry school. Then we have um, summer school in nuclear analytical uh, techniques at UC Davis. Um, we had our mandatory school here, and then also boot camp. So this is a picture of our students from UC Berkeley summer school. Um, this is 2014. Uh, also, UC Irvine offers very interesting uh, summer school, which is basis of nuclear um, reactor operations. And students that finish that will have the license to operate small research reactors. So this is uh, uh, very interesting. Um, this is uh, the summer school at uh, UNLV, so you can see what um, they're doing. Los Alamos Summer School. So this was the first summer uh, school at Los Alamos in 2014. Um, and then um, uh, there were 21 students, so it was introduction to non-destructive assay of uranium and plutonium bearing materials using gamma ray and neutron measurements techniques. Uh, this is the picture from Los Alamos. Um, this is uh, 2014 public policy and nuclear threats boot camp. Uh, we always have ac excellent uh, um, presenters. Um, these are diplomats, uh, high-level officials that come to talk to our students. Um, this is basic nuclear reactor operation school. Uh, this is 2015. We also have a policy boot camp, um, uh, nuclear analytical techniques, and this time we had a summer school um, that was actually at Los Alamos in Sandia. So one week it was Los Alamos and several days our students were able to go to Sandia, um, uh, New Mexico, uh, and at least observe facilities that they have. So this is from 2015. 25 NSSC students from six institutions. And this is what was done um, in uh, uh, this summer school. So this is Edgar Scientific Summer School um, that uh, we will hopefully continue offering. Uh, we had a list of seminars. This is just 2014, 2015. Um, and it, this was done different type of panels, um, nuclear physics for future policy makers. We had students to scientists, uh, perspectives from Women in National Laboratories, so it was great uh, presentation. So this is again panels. Um, in each, every year, we have a um, UITI type of conference where um, our, our sponsors from um, NNSA come to um, listen to what we have accomplished in the previous year, but we use that opportunity for meet and greet luncheons uh, with uh, scientists and researchers from national laboratories so that our students could meet with them and uh, um, uh, eventually pass their resumes and eventually 
um, positions in the labs. So we are very proud that we co-sponsored this event. Um, so this was a panel discussion with these great scientists from uh, national laboratories, women that share their life experiences, how they, they became scientists and why they went to work for national laboratories. So you can see them uh, here discussing with our students. I think we had about 150 uh, students present. Um, this is another great uh, nuclear uh, science for future policymakers workshop that we had um, in January 2015. Uh, and this is application of open source tools in non-proliferation. So we had a, a hands-on workshop in uh, collaboration with the Monterey Institute, uh, where our students could uh, uh, actually see and use some of the um, software packages that uh, were developed and play uh, the role of international inspectors. So in the summary, um, we are very happy to report that uh, after four and a half years, um, uh, we have uh, excellent results both in recruiting uh, the best students that go to our education and training, that work in uh, over 50 um, or more research projects that we have in collaboration with national labs, uh, that uh, uh, we funded a large number of people uh, that uh, are 35 uh, and it will be probably by the end of this semester 40 or more that will get full-time positions or postdoc positions in one of national laboratories um, and uh, we accomplished a very strong coupling between national laboratories, graduate student practicums, summer schools, internship, mentorship and as well as adjunct positions that we have. So this is the end of my presentation, and I'm open for questioning. Before I take questions, uh, we, uh, uh, thank you, Jesse, and it was a nice tribute to both Heinemann Nietzsche and Stan Fusen. Uh, one way of honoring uh, Stan is that uh, we have decided uh, to uh, stand up. Uh, they stand, Prusen, Stanley Prusen. Memorial Fellowship and Not Preparation Great. for a graduate student. We are actually building up an endowment for that, and it's going, the fundraising is going extremely well. Um, the initial uh, uh, Prusen Fellowship, now that the NSC has been approved, will be an NSC funded fellow, which will be, I think, a, a great feather in the cap for the NNSA and the NSC, as well as for Stan himself. And so we look forward to some, we know we have some great applications coming in uh, that we're uh, looking at right now. Anyway, let's take some questions, Bob. Um, you had hundreds of people involved in this, students and so on. How many of them are not Americans? So basically, uh, one of the limitations for this particular grant is that we cannot fund uh, non-citizens. They all have to be Americans. Uh, yes, but what we could do uh, we cannot fund them, but the same research project that uh, our funded students and faculty are working on, anybody can work on those projects. So this is uh, basically the limitation. In, in the new uh, grant that we got, they relax a little bit this requirement, so we will still be limited um, to funding uh, uh, citizens only for students, the postdocs, Researchers, uh, visiting faculty now do not need to be. I'm, I'm asking the question because I wasn't sure whether university policy would allow a program. You are correct. We it, had to fight for well, the university how, how, how system. Did you, then how did you we lose the fight? We found a hole in the policy. Well, can you explain it? Because <laughs> it seems to me, it seems to me, the University of California with ten campuses. Uh, has, has an open door policy and you don't have to be an American to go there. It's true. Now, so, all, right, so, so all of a sudden uh, you find yourself a student here and you can't okay. do something. That if, you, if you want to explain what happened, I almost got hurt the talk because uh, fortunately when we were to submit our proposal to sponsor the project office here this publicly, uh, maybe <coughs> three weeks be before us, Stan Prusen and Jim Sigris were about to submit their proposal and they were turned down 
because of that requirement. So they warned me three weeks in advance that this might happen. So I start fighting the, the war. And uh, what saved us, so we had to basically go to the uh, office of the president of the Clarence system because uh, Sport didn't want to make a decision on a $25 million grant. So uh, the difference was that in the call for proposal, there was a sentence that said that we have to train students, okay, that and that. So if these are trainees, then uh, the policy does not apply. So we went with that, and all of our students are called NSSC fellows or trainees. Um, so it worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might have worked, but it sounds to me wrong. It is, believe me, both Stan, Stan, and I, Stan and I were fighting on two fronts. So first, she sent so many messages to NNSA saying that it doesn't make sense because national laboratories do have foreign researchers working there. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, on the other hand, we fought university uh, administration as well. Uh, but uh, with all that, they relax it, so now uh, only students uh, do need to be citizens. Okay. Everybody else does not. Yes? How difficult was the uh, logistics of coordinating between all institutions? Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work, but uh, with modern technology, such as video conferencing, uh, we are doing it all the time. Um, so uh, in many cases, our um, uh, copy eyes for different countries all over the world, uh, and so on and so on, so it is possible. So uh, specifically, and uh, I think it's, uh, I might continue doing it in the future for two of the largest proposals. Uh, when we were to write a proposal, it usually happens when I leave uh, for the summer, and then they issue call for proposals. For BNRC, uh, I uh, wrote and coordinated the writing of that pr proposal from my farm in Europe, okay? And it happened this summer as well. So, but uh, we won both times, so I think I should, next proposal, I'm also going out of the country and then coordinating. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy, but it worked. So we had, during summer, uh, we had these video conferences uh, every day for two hours. So it was Berkeley time noon, I believe. My time, uh, it was 9 p.m. Europe. And then we had people all over. So. I didn't eat lunch for a month. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, uh, I'd like to welcome Jasmine back five years from now when we give the next cook. We don't <laughs> 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 so let's thank her again.